Welcome back everyone to 10.2, Calculus with Parametric Curves. Now in chapter 10, we only get four sections. So two of them deal with parametric equations and curves, which we're doing now. And then the other two deal with polar equations uh, and coordinate system. So you gotta really savor the parametric stuff. This is the last section that we get to play with these things. So in this section, uh, we're gonna do some calculus, right? So we're probably gonna need um, derivatives and some integrals, things like that. Uh, and then we're gonna apply these things to some tangent line problems and arc length problems. So let's get to it. How do we differentiate a parametrized curve? So we're gonna suppose the curve is traced out once by the parametric equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t. f and g need to be differentiable. Assuming we want to find the tangent line of a point on the curve where y is also a differentiable function of x, then we can use the chain rule so to give us that dy dt is equal to dy dx times dx dt. So this should look like our good old chain rule back from calc 1. Again, the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is going to be dy dx. So our goal would be to solve for this thing. So therefore, we need that the derivative of x with respect to t is not equal to 0, so that way we can divide by it on both sides, giving us the slope of the tangent line is dy dt divided by dx dt. Of course, again, we need the derivative of x with respect to t to be not 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to apply this to an example. We have x as a function of time, or t, we have y as a function of t, and we're trying to find the tangent line to the curve given that t is pi over 3. So remember, a tangent line, we're going to use a good old point-slope form, y minus f of a is equal to m times x minus a. This is an equation of a line that goes through the point a comma f of a. Now this came back from the good old days when we had y was a function of x. All right, so this is y equals f of x in this case. So really what we need to take from this is that a is an x value and f of a is, needs to be a y value. Okay, So we want to hit this point and then we are going to specify a slope, an m value here in a little bit. Okay, so what is this point that I need to hit? Well, we have a way to get x and y values if we have a t value. So we have a t value, t is pi over 3. So therefore, the corresponding x value is going to be 3 times pi over 3 minus sine of pi over 3, which simplifies down to pi minus root 3 over 2. If I plug in t is pi over 3 into our y function, we get 1 minus cosine of pi over 3 which simplifies down to 1 minus a half, which is 1 half. So now we have an x value and we have a y value. So, so far, if I was to just plug in the information that I have so far, our tangent line equation would be 1 minus 1 half, that's our y value, is equal to m times x minus, and our x value is pi, and then minus a negative, so positive, root 3 over 2. So now the last question we have is what is our m value? What is our slope? Well, the slope of the tangent line is supposed to be the derivative at the specific point. So our specific point here is pi minus root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. So what is the derivative at this point? Well, that's what our theorem was all about. Right? We need to take the derivative of y with respect to t and x with respect to t and take the quotient of these values. So let's get to it here. The derivative of x with respect to t. Well, I have an x function. I can take its derivative. I'm going to get 3, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, so minus cosine of t. Derivative of y with respect to t. Derivative of 1, oops, derivative of 1 is 0, and derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. So my final answer here will be just sine of t. Now, I wanted a specific value. I want the derivative when t is pi over 3. So let's go ahead and plug in pi over 3, and I'm going to get 3 minus 1 half, so that's 5 halves. And then for my y value, I'm going to plug in pi over 3, I'm going to get root 3 over 2. And according to our formula, if we want dy dx, we need to take the quotient of these two values. So this is dy dt divided by dy, so ooh, dy dt divided by dx dt. Ah, sorry. Some twos cancel out here, and so I get root 3 over 5 
is my final answer. That's the slope. Plug that back into my equation. I'm going to just go ahead and use the magic of technology here to copy and paste. So everything's the exact same except for where there used to be an m. I'm now specifying the slope root 3 over 5. So this is my tangent line equation. All right, let's practice with another one. Some small changes going on here. I'm going to want to find the equation of the tangent line to the curve x equals 1 plus natural log of t, y equals t squared plus 3. And maybe the biggest change of all is that now I'm specifying the point 1, 4. So 1, 4, well, this is an x value and a y value here. So at first glance, this seems very convenient, right? So I can go ahead and start plugging these in to my point slope form. y minus 4 is equal to m times x minus 1. So it's taken away some of the confusion. And I need, though, the derivative, right? m is supposed to be the derivative, dy dx, at the value 1, 4. And I'll show you why this is, uh, why it's not completely more simple, right? So when I take the derivative, I get 1 over t. When I take the derivative of dy dt, I get 2t. But now I need numbers, right? I need to know what should I plug into this, right? Before I had like a t equals pi over 3. But now I don't have that, right? I need to know a number to plug into this for t in order to spit out the value 1, 4. So the question is, what t value should I plug in? Well, in order to solve that out, I can choose x equals 1, so 1 equals 1 plus natural log of t. Or, likewise, you could have chosen 4, which is y, is supposed to be equal to t squared plus 3. And now you could solve either one of these to try to find your t value. In the first case, I want to know when the natural log of t is equal to 0. That only happens when t equals 1. And in the second case, I want to know when t squared equals 1. Well, that happens at two values for t, either plus or minus 1. So as you can see in this case, if you had just used the second equation, it wouldn't have uniquely identified your t value. It could have been either positive or negative 1. It was actually the first equation in this case that uniquely identified, hey, t has to be 1. Now we can go ahead and plug these things in. So when t equals 1 here, the derivative of x with respect to t is 1. And when t equals 1, the derivative of y with respect to t is 2. So dy dx is 2 over 1, which is, of course, 2. Plugging this in for our slope, we get y minus 4 is equal to 2 times x minus 1. And that is our tangent line equation. All right, one more dealing with tangent lines here. I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to ask a little bit more of a difficult question. I want to know where the points on the curve x equals t cubed minus 3t and y equals t squared minus 3 are where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. So let's remind ourselves, when you have a horizontal tangent line, that means the slope is 0. When you have a vertical tangent line, it means the slope is undefined. And I want to think, when the slope is undefined, uh, this is something like positive or negative infinity. This is a case where the slope would be undefined. So now let's look at our slope, right? Our slope is supposed to be dy dx, which is a fraction, right? It's this dy dt divided by dx dt. So if you want to have a fraction equaling 0, the only way you can do this is if the numerator equals 0. Let me go ahead and write that down. So m equals 0 only when dy dt, which is our numerator, equals 0. And this gives us the horizontal tangent line. m is undefined. Well, how do you make a fraction undefined? Well, probably the easiest way is to divide by 0, right? So if dx dt equals 0, then our slope is undefined. And remember, these correspond back to a horizontal tangent line and a vertical tangent line. So the real question is, when does dy dt equal 0 and when does dx dt equal 0? So let's calculate these things out. Well, dy dt is just 2t. That was pretty easy. And the only way to make that 0 is to have t equals 0. But this is more of a when, 
right? We want where is the tangent line horizontal. So if I plug in this t equals zero into my parametric equations, I can get an x value and a y value. So it turns out my x would be zero and my y would be negative three. Again, just plug in t into those equations. So zero, negative three is the only point where the tangent line is horizontal. Now, how about where the tangent line is vertical? In this case, I want dx dt to be equal to zero. Well, dx dt, if I take the derivative, I get 3t squared minus 3. Right? That's my derivative of my parametric equation up here. And this factors right, to 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Ooh, I said x. I mean t. t minus 1, t plus 1. Where does this equal to zero? Well, when t equals plus or minus 1. So the claim is there's going to be two points, two different uh, values corresponding to t equals positive 1 and t equals negative 1. So when I plug in t equals negative 1, so I get negative 1 cubed, then minus uh, 3 times negative 1. And this is going to simplify down to negative 1 plus 3. That's going to be 2. When I plug in negative 1 into my y equation, I get negative 2. So my first point is going to be 2 negative 2. My second point, how about when I plug in t equals 1? When I plug in t equals 1, I'm going to get 1 minus 3. That's going to be the same thing as negative 2. And when I plug in t equals 1 for y, I also get negative 2. So the second point is negative 2, negative 2. So there are two places where the tangent line is vertical and there's one place where the tangent line is horizontal. All right, and that should just about do us here in 10.2 for the derivative stuff. Go ahead and take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to do integration and arc length. I'll see you shortly.